we just want to start uh, with tell us what happened at the residence of Justice Marriott. Yes, I got a distress call from another uh, very senior counsel that uh, the Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili's house was surrounded by fully armed security personnel. Some said they were from the uh, Attorney General's uh, panel on property recovery, joint panel on property recovery. Some said they were from EFCC. The statement the EFCC has just denied. Some said they were from DSS. Some said they were from police. Some said they were from army. And that got me worried. I was just coming from the airport on my way to Abuja from Lagos. So I had to move to the premises immediately. And I discovered that a lot of things were wrong with the so-called search warrant that these people procured. I discovered that an affidavit was allegedly sworn to at the FCT High Court by one Umar Aliyu. As far back as 13th of October 2021, saying that he suspected, maybe as a whistleblower, whatever, that there are some illegal activities in some places around the F FCT. He didn't mention any address or any name or any particular person. That was on the 13th. Then only yesterday, based on that, on the 28th, one CSP Lawrence Ajudo attached to the Attorney General of the Federation's Joint Task Force on Recovery of Property, now applied to the Chief Magistrate at Wuse Zone 5, asking for a search warrant. This Chief Magistrate today, 29th, granted that search warrant. And guess what? The search warrant did not carry any name of any person. It didn't say Justice Mary Peter Odili. It didn't say the husband, Dr. Peter Odili. So it was clear that this was a wrong address. No name was put on it so as to say that it was targeted. I do know as a lawyer of over 40 years at the bar, that if you want to carry out a search warrant, you don't carry out a search warrant at the graveyard or a cemetery or abandoned houses. There will be a person you are targeting. Who were the persons? They did not put a single name. What address? You got the wrong address. So there's this theory, therefore, that it could have been a clear case of genuine mistaken identity. I only hope so. But the other theory, which I seem to want to believe more because of the activities of this government, the antecedents, is that it was politically motivated. Dr. Peter Odili is a big fish, a titan in the PDP. Today, the Court of Appeal, Protocol Division, just dismissed the application by the former chairman, Prince Uche Secondus, to halt the convention started tomorrow. And Dr. Peter Odili is a big fish within the PDP. And the convention is started tomorrow. How come that an affidavit sworn to on the 13th of October, today is 29, 16 days ago, was suddenly activated yesterday and today, and the search warrant issued today? Some people believe, and I'm, I seem to be of that school of thought, that it was done to embarrass the former governor of River State, Dr. Peter Odili, to embarrass this cerebral, highly apolitical justice of the Supreme Court, justice, Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili, who has never been in politics, even as First Lady of River State. She moved gradually from the Magistrate Court to the High Court, to the Court of Appeal, to the Supreme Court. She has never been known, even as First Lady, to be involved in all those um, um, semi kind of attitude. I'm first lady here. She was always behind. 
So I believe it was done to embarrass them. But for whatever it was done, it was a shame to this country, particularly in the estimation of the international uh, community. We shouldn't be doing things to embarrass us. Nigeria is not a banana republic. We are the biggest nation among the black race in the world. Nigeria is 212.9 million people by the latest UN projection as of three days ago. I wish you don't be behave like all these banana republics that have 500,000 people or 1 million people. A robust country like this, driven by the best brains in the world, that we should have security forces budging into the solemn house of a justice of the Supreme Court, no name on the search warrant. You are budging into a house which is number seven in Mo River Street, whereas your search warrant bears clearly number nine in Mo Street. What is the correlation between Imo River, number seven, and Imo Street, number nine? Did you see the, yes. did you see the officers themselves? And were you able to identify, um, for instance, which arm of security agents? Well, one of them that was spoken to by the security men at the premises was identified as one major Ola. That was the only one. The rest were keeping to the shadows. I'm just coming from the house because we all decided to stay there and mount night vision to see what and how they will do it. I wanted to see whether they were going to do what they did August 2016 that has forever put a black spot on me, on, on, on Nigeria, where they barge into homes of justices of the Supreme Court, who did DSS operatives without any cost, ransacked everywhere. And some of the judge, justices were found to be innocent. One of them just died, apparently never getting over that experience because he was finally exonerated. But there was no apology from the security forces to say, oh, we made a mistake, we are sorry, that we barged into your house erroneously. I would expect the security forces this time around to issue a public apology to the Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili whichever arm of the forces did it, because EFCC has already denied it. If DSS also comes out to deny it, the police comes out to deny it. I've already said that CSP, one CSP, Ajodo, Lawrence Ajodo, attached to the Joint Task Force Recovery of Property in the office of the Attorney General carried, I mean, got procure or got the, um, um, the search warrant. So if they now find that it was an erroneous entry and that it was a mistake. For God's sake, let them do Nigerians and Nigeria the minimal of saying we are sorry. We made a honest mistake. And heavens will not fall. And they will be applauded for it. But let them not always pretend that all is well, even after causing great embarrassment. The, uh -huh. go, go on the internet. The, 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 the matter went Vera everywhere. As, as counsel to Justice uh, Mary Odili and indeed the family, um, if this apology is not uh, is not tendered, what would you be seeking? Any? I will not take any decision for myself. I will confer with my clients. A lawyer does not take decisions on his own. He's brief by a client to take a particular decision. But one thing is clear to me is that they were wrong, wrong, and wrong. And when you make mistakes, there's what you call atonement for your mistakes. Apology is one of them. This word or this phrase, I'm sorry, is a balm that suits frayed nerves and bring about a spirit of resurgimento. But to pretend you have done well when you know you have hurt some feelings, when you know you have greatly embarrassed and ridiculed is serving justice of the Supreme Court, one of the best we ever had, whose judgments drip with fecundity, lucidity, and intellectualism. It's not a fair deal for Nigeria, particularly for the judiciary, which has been made to be the crouching arm of the government, maybe going by what Alexander Hamilton once said, 
in his Federalist Paper no, number 78 that the judiciary is the weakest arm of government because it has neither sword to defend the judgment nor the post to keep any sums. So it has to depend on the executive, even for judgments it has delivered. So the Nigerian judiciary has suffered a lot in the hands of executives, successive executives over the years, even during military. But I want to dare say that not even under military dictatorships has the judiciary suffered much damage than under the present um, democratic dispensation. And this is a sad commentary on our democratic dispensation and constitutionalism. Thanks. Yes, thank you.